Hello, welcome back to the Vintnerd. I've got two power supplies here for the TI 994A, the factory one that came with the computer when I bought it used, and a brand new replacement one. But I can't just plug the brand new one in. Got to make some changes to it. So let's find out what we need to do. So you've probably heard me bark about power supplies for these old retro computers. Uh, some are good, some are bad, but the, they're all old, 30, 40, whatever years old. So my original factory power supply for the TI-99 I have here, which I bought this computer used and it came with this used power supply, uh, besides the fact that it does teeter because it's missing a foot, but that, that's not a showstopper. But when I plug it in, It buzzes. You can hear what that sounds like there. And I, I just don't feel that confident using this uh, with my TI-99. It works. I've checked the voltage on it. Uh, it appears to be fine. But whatever the, is causing the buzzing, I'd rather just get a new modern power supply. So I've done some stuff for the Ataris on here. Uh, we've talked about those. Uh, this is completely different in that for the TI-99, the original power supply uh, with its funky connector here has only AC power on it. And uh, let me get my notes here. It is uh, 16 volt AC and eight volt AC. And then inside the computer itself, it converts it to DC voltages. And those are gonna be five volt positive, five volt negative and 12 volt positive and that's where this new modern power supply comes in this is from Keylog. Uh, i went ahead and bought this a couple weeks ago i've been wanting to do more with the ti-99 i just didn't want to use this old buzzing power supply but the new power supply that they came up with doesn't supply the 8 and 16 volt ac it has the same connector on it but what they've done is they've designed this to give the five plus and five minus and 12 plus straight into the computer, bypassing the DC board inside the conversion board and just going straight to the motherboard. So this actually does two things. It replaces the old external power supply and bypasses the old internal DC converter board, AC to DC. So now with this, I'll have a nice new clean DC signals straight into the board, bypassing two old components. But the thing is, I have to open up the machine and bypass that board. Uh, additionally, just to note, and I have to note this to myself, I'm probably saying this to myself now, so I don't do this, it's the same connector. So once I make a modification to the computer, I can only use it with the new power supply, which is great. But if I ever take it anywhere, I've got to make sure somebody doesn't plug the old supply into it. So eventually I'll have to put some warning stickers or whatever on it. So uh, let's go ahead and get this down and uh, open it up. Okay, got it down. And let's go ahead and open this up. Ah, that always flips off. Put that aside. Always got to check on these because a lot of computers, the front screws will be shorter because the case is usually thinner. And the back screw and the front screw are the same. Being a little difficult here. Yep, screws are still the same. I think I want to use a different screwdriver. Okay, that is much better. Uh, this is actually the first time I've ever opened a TI-99. 4 or 4A, does it matter? If you haven't done this before, we're doing it together for the first time. I miss one? No. Just be careful. Take it easy. Okay, I've got something I'm doing wrong here, huh? I can almost hear all the TI-99ers yelling at me that I'm doing something wrong. And they would be right. So clearly the power supply inside the switch. Okay. Never force any of this stuff here. It's the switch on the front. Ugh. Um, got a dead bonus bee in here. You know, I've done enough of this stuff to ad hoc, but <clears throat> it must be a trick I'm missing here. I see you. There we go. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, I've dropped two things. Be right back. Okay, here's the power supply part, the switch. That uh, the puzzle, I will figure out how it goes back in. And that's kind of fun. They're using a, like a foot on the inside here at the expansion port. This is the internal DC power supply. You can see the AC, the original AC power supply plugging in here, three wires out of four. And we're gonna to have to wire the fourth one coming over here to the internal board. And then that's going to the motherboard. So I'm gonna grab my uh, uh, grounding strap since I'm touching the inside here now. Okay, strapped in. Definitely would recommend grounding yourself whenever you work with these newer stuff and older stuff. So let's go ahead, take off this one screw, which is different than the case screws. So let's keep that separate. Oh, there is a second one, missed that. So this is the internal AC to DC conversion board. This board also holds the power switch on and off and the power LED. And if we take this out of the circuits, we won't have that anymore. And I'm gonna see what I could do to possibly bring that back in. But I'm not, not, not hoping for much on that. Okay. It's ground is the white wire. And that goes over here to the board. And the white wire doesn't go over to the switch. So the original switch on here is a double pull. And what they're doing is they're cutting the uh, eight volt and the 16 volt on or off. Ground is still going to the machine and that's fine. Now we're gonna switch, uh, no pun intended, to a power supply that's gonna feed the machine three different voltages and this switch can only handle two. So we're not gonna be able to use the original switch. Uh, the nice thing on the key log is it does have a switch built in. So we'll just use that. Now what I'd like to look at intently for a minute is the LED could cut the circuit on here and hardwire to it. And I'm gonna think about that. In the meantime, uh, I also wanna leave this in the case because it does house the switch uh, and the LED, even though at the moment, once I take this out of the circuit, it won't be there or won't be functioning anymore. But you know, who wants a hole in the case where the LED went? So I'm gonna leave the original board inside the machine. So we need to take this off and use it. And we need to use this set of wires, which they did not mark on the power supply itself. I'm gonna to have to plug this in and then uh, check each wire to see exactly what it's supposed to be. I've got a picture printout. This is from the manufacturer. Uh, it shows a connector and silk screen on the board, but that's not the case with my board. And that just goes to the show. You never know what you're gonna have when you open up the machine. Okay, so I've gotta figure out for sure what the voltages are. I can see the ground plane. Usually the ground plane is everything that's this all metal on the circuit board that isn't connecting to much of anything except for ground points. So that's a pretty good assumption that uh, going from uh, here back toward me, it's something ground, something, something. So we'll use the multimeter to figure that out. I'm gonna disconnect this from the motherboard so it's no longer going to supply power to that. Now I checked this power supply earlier, just to confirm again for myself that it was working. So let's go ahead and plug it in one last time. And I can hear it buzzing. Let's go ahead and uh, carefully plug that in. Okay, so now this board is live.
although it doesn't want to light the LED. Let's see what we got for power output here. Okay, so this should be five volts and 12, yep, 11.79 volts and then negative five volts. Okay, so although for this key log power supply, the information from their website has a different diagram. It's got a connector with a silk screen on the board. Mine doesn't have that, but the pinouts are the same. So I can confidently just, just go by that. I'm gonna desolder off this board. But once I disconnect this, I'm not gonna know what the wires are anymore. So I'm gonna to wanna to mark this up and I'll just grab a pen for that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this and I could probably remember it, but I'm not, I'm not gonna trust that. <laughs> Come on, I'm old enough to know not to trust my memory. So let's see, we got five and then ground going right to left and then 12 volts, and then negative five. So I'm gonna take these wires out, which I've marked, so I know what they do when they go to the motherboard. And these are already color coded. I just need to remove all of those. And then we're gonna connect them together. Okay, let's go ahead and desolder this. Okay, as I suspected, they're just gonna fall right out. There we go. Last one. Okay. So I've got the connector off that goes to the motherboard. Let's take off the input. Just a matter of time and done. Okay. So this old internal power supply is still intact. It still worked the last I knew. We're just going to put it back in place because it's it's out of the way now as far as circuits go. Put the LED there. And then, of course, I'll fight with the uh, putting the switch back together. Whatever that screws into plays a little loose. I'll find out eventually. I'm, I'm going to open this up and do some more mods to it as time permits. Okay, that's back in place. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this out of the way. Okay, so now we need to get this wired up. And I'm gonna need one more wire. I might wanna use something a little stronger uh, for the fourth wire, because we need to add a wire onto this, right onto this empty area here. Now nicely, even though uh, they only use three pins out of the four, they left the fourth pin there. Uh, would have been interesting if they took it out and did a key, which I think they did on uh, the later models. Okay, well, I found a nice donor wire, uh, and it's a different color. So keep the motif of different colors here. I'm going to go ahead and solder that onto the AC connector here. Well, what used to be the uh, original connector still is the original connector. We're just making it better a lot of metal to heat up here i have the stand that's holding this clipped onto the metal to try to create a little heat sink for it seems to be sucking the heat off too quick well that's proving to be a little difficult how hot is this my wire keeps shifting uh, these helping hands are definitely indispensable well so far i'm successfully creating a cold solder joint Okay, I think that's it. With practice, you tend to find out seeing how it's flowing and the color changing on it. Okay, it's pretty good. It's on there. Okay, so now the next step is to take these four wires, which are leading from the supply on the outside, which is now gonna be switched to DC, to the wires on the inside. I've got some shrink tubing here that you're gonna to wanna to put on first. That'll help cover up the solder joints instead of using uh, electrical tape that will eventually fall off. Okay, we've got four wires. Where do they go? 
So looking on uh, the printout I have here, which will stick up on the screen here, probably over covering over this, uh, we've got, if this is the plug that's coming in, this is the back side. This is coming in and this is the back side. So they go together like that. So whatever the pinout is here, it's gonna be the same on the back side. And we're looking at ground, 12 volt, negative five, positive five, yellow being the positive five, which is not the same as this connector, so we can't just go in a row. Let's start with my new yellow wire, which is going to be positive five. And on here, that's the one to my right. You want to solder it well, have a nice connection, but don't make it too fat. You got to get your shrink tubing over it. Okay, that's looking good. A little tug. I'm going to slip the tubing back over it, but I'm not going to shrink it yet. Let's, uh, let's hook up the rest. Now the next one, the red wire is negative five volts. So red, negative five volts. And on here is negative five volts. Okay, they met up nicely. Okay, nice. Then we've got white, which is positive 12 volts. And on here, I marked that as uh, this one, 12 and 12. Okay, that leaves us with the last one. And we can assume it's ground and let's check that. So up here, it's ground, the black wire, and that's going to the only free wire I have left over here, which is G for ground. So we're right on target here. And by now, all, all the other wires want to come in and play. Another nice thing to this modification, going with this keylog power supply, I would have to assume uh, the computer's gonna be cooler on the inside. There's, there's less electronics heating up and as humans, we're, we're really poor at transferring or uh, transforming power, you know, from AC to DC or 12 volts to five volts or whatever, we always lose heat in the process. So that original DC board on the inside of the TI-99 was definitely generating heat every time it was on. So that's now out of the equation. There's less inside the machine generating heat. So there, there's a bonus there. We've got everything wired up. I haven't, uh, shrunk the shrink tubing because I want to check my work first. So let's go ahead and bring in the new power supply. Let's connect it to the old original connector. Everything looks safe to plug in. Let's get the multimeter in here and ground is right here. So the key lock there's a power switch on it. Let's turn it on. It will work better. And uh, it lights up, so I should know it's on. That's probably a nice thing. So we're bypassing the built-in DC board that gives you the power on indicator and the power switch on and off. And now they moved it, uh, Keylog put the on off on the power supply and a light so that you know it's on. Okay, let's see if we get better results actual results there we go five volts where I expect it 12 volts 11.8 and then negative 4.7 volts perfect exactly what we need let's go ahead pull this out <clears throat> I'm just careful on this bare aluminum metal casing here now the fun part, make sure the joint, the solder joint is in the middle. There it is right there. I can feel it. And let's go ahead and shrink that tubing around it. Do, 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 Ah, that's a great song. I feel like I'm in an elevator. Studio elevator. 
Maybe the studio needs an elevator. I had to get up on the step stool to get up there and get the TI-99 down if I had an elevator. Now I do have a heat gun as well. This is a pretty small job though, and this works. Plus it's a lot quieter on the video. And last but not least, again, all the wires are getting in the way. <clears throat> wow, smell that retro. All good. So now we have a new cable uh, comprised of two old cables and the DC power supply board, the original one used to be right in here. And we're good to go. I'm gonna clean this up and get this back together. Okay, well, I've got the parts back here and I uh, actually figured out how the power switch goes uh, back on uh, in two pieces, uh, intentionally, intentionally. So let's go ahead and put this new cable in here. Slide that back in place there. That's gonna just be a pressure fit uh, when you put the case back on. This used to run over to here, and then that ran over to there. Gotta make sure we have space in here for this. So this used to go up here. So let's run that to there. We're not blocking any posts or screw holes. Let's connect that back together. It's keyed, so it goes back in the one way. There must be some space underneath here for that. And then for the key, for the switch, this small part that's on the outside that should have, uh, you know, that you move back and forth, that needs to get pulled out ever so gently first to disassemble this. Well, eventually I did pull it out. <laughs> very slowly and then the second part the switch goes in to here it's so dark in there there we go okay so that rests in there slide back and forth which isn't going to do anything anymore but aesthetically pleasing okay so we're going to put this let me spy into there. Is there space there? Maybe. Go ahead and loosen this. Okay, we got that out of the way, the bolt. That wants the rest into there, and it can. So you never want to just put these old computers back together and just assume it fit and snug, and then you just crimp stuff together when you screw it down, which isn't always good. So you see where the case is meeting it nice all the way around, and then over to here. My yellow wire is in the way now. Let's just tuck that over. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Just pop this switch back in. Nice. Okay, that's working nice again. Again, it's dysfunctional now, but aesthetically, it's pleasing. Okay, I'm going to put the screws back in here, and then uh, let's hook it up and see if it works for sure. Okay, so let's plug this in and cross our fingers. I mean, we double-checked everything, right? Okay. Turn it on. Ah, perfect. Looks great. Nice. Hello. Hello is always an incorrect statement. Okay, cool. Okay, great. It works. It's great. It's perfect. I can, uh, now do some other things with the TI-99, not worrying about this old power supply frying it. Because the machine, the, the machine, I bought it used uh, a few months ago. It works perfect. Uh, no problems with it. Very happy with it. And now, uh, except for that old power supply, now I'm much happier with the new power supply. So thanks for joining and uh, keep tuned. Subscribe if you want, because I'll be doing some more TI-99. I've got some Atari stuff coming up I'm working on. And any suggestions, give me some comments. Uh, I'd like to know what directions uh, you might want to, to go in here. Something I might not have thought of. There was so many, so many 
tweaks and mods and things to do with these old retro computers. It's, it's pretty fun. So till next time.